Come here. Welcome to the famous Foxes Aftermath show, live every Sunday on Leicester Fan TV. Come on, you foxes. <laughs> Good morning, Foxes. How the devil are you today? How's your weekend been so far? It's been a bit of a long week. We've had eight, it'll be nine days before we play again. But you know what day it is. It's Sunday. It's 10 a.m. So it's time for the famous Foxes Aftermath show run by us fans, for you and your fans out there. And you know what? Your opinion really matters. So get them comments in now. Let's get going. It's kickoff time. Come on, you foxes. The Leicester City Machine is on the march again. Leicester Fan TV presents a variety of content. Like fan discussions, match analysis, and engaging with Leicester fans worldwide. We want your views live. Thanks to our sponsors, Everot, Follow Blinds, Pocket Pies, Pink Car Leasing, Distillers Direct, Hologram, Take Me, Nubian Co, and the Fox's Arms and Rainbows. We are live in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Morning all. And it's been a long week with no football since we kicked off R12 last week for the M69 derby. Five wins at home in a row already. Could be could make it six, but it's going to be a tough, tough one Monday night. The last time we won five in the row, it was December of 2019, and we won seven on the bounce there back in December when we had Mr. Brendan Rogers in charge. But it's another chance to go 10 points clear again. The M69 derby is still in the back of our heads a little bit, but I think it's more in the back of Coventry's minds than anything, the way they celebrated. On that note, I'm going to bring Reedy in. Let's bring Reedy in. Morning, Reedy. Morning, how are you? It's been a week this week with no football, in it? It's been all right. Obviously, it's we knew... Days. It's we, 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 days, pal. We, knew, we knew it was going to be changed to the Ipswich games for a Monday, weren't we? So... And obviously we played uh, commentary last week, so it's good to see. But then again, we'll have a, it'll be a short time before we play. Who is it? It's not, it's not Stoke, is it? Next after in the cup game. Oh, it's it's, it's uh, Birmingham, isn't it? Yeah, Sorry. Birmingham. I know we play Swansea on the Tuesday on the Tuesday or the Wednesday night. One of the two, anyway. So there'll be quite a few games after today, after tomorrow. So that's why they it's all a massive thick and fast, well, don't they? Um, we'll start on the big news this week that Cassidy has gone. We won't do the extra. Castell is gone. He was training on the Friday morning. He was in the picture. It was in the preview and that and everything. And it makes me smile a little bit that after the Coventry game, no, sorry, after the Millwall game, Enzo said Castell is going to be a big part to come for the next two months. What uh, next few months? Sorry, what what do you think's gone on there, pal? Do you, I don't know. I really don't know what's going on. If I'm totally honest, I think Chelsea just want want him back, and it, we didn't have any choice in the matter. Obviously, Enzo obviously wanted him at the start of the season because he obviously the Italian link, and he knows him from previous. I think he's managed him before at some place. So, um, it's good. It's a good thing to to see that they want him back because we didn't see too much of him. If I'm totally honest, so I'm glad that they've took him back. And now it obviously means that we can bring the man that we want to into the club. Yeah, but uh, Dave, I've got, I'll answer that question myself in a minute. I honestly think Dave has put, Dave Fellows has put, I honestly think Caste leaving is a blessing. He had two good games, but other than that, he uh, he had not good enough in this system we play. I agree with that, but at the minute, I think we need bodies in that midfield. And especially on Monday night, it's left us short, I think. Um, but going on what you were just saying, with Caste going, Everson's gone. I'm not sure we can still bring anybody in. Yes, I know it makes room in the squad. Yes, I know the wages are different. But I don't think we can still bring anybody in. We've got to sell. And Enzo said this himself. We've got to sell before we buy. Mm. I I don't know 
the stipulations. I don't know how it's possible to get someone in. But the moment Cassidy went back, obviously I know you don't really rate Fabrizio, but when he says that... No, I don't. Happen, when, it's, when, it's, when he says that something's going to happen and it's on the brink of getting done... <laughs> Give me John Percy any day of the week, not Fabrizio. Well, either way, for me, the moment he said something, it's done. So, uh, yeah, Nick's, it's, Nick's it's made a good point. Happening. Chelsea wants to flog Cassidy for the financial fair play. I mean, they've spent kajillions of money, haven't they? They've spent absolutely millions and millions. I think it's nearly a billion they've spent in the last two years. Uh, so, whether they need to get some back, I don't know. Is that because Chelsea need to claw some money back? But they're not going to get an awful lot. I, I, I think, got. I think it's mainly for their squad. To be honest, I think I don't know too much about the Chelsea squad, but I think there's a few injuries in there now, and maybe they do need that sort of player in that position um, to cover, like we would have had if he was still with us. So, um, and again, it just means that now, if you think about it, the players we've been asking for in Pratt, if he is fit or a few other players in that role, they're, they're going to have to play in that role now until we do get this entry in or do get a few players back from the AFCON. So it gives us a, it give, it's tighter for us because we have lost Cassidy, but it means that we, we are going to be forced into playing players that we, we've been asking for for the last couple of weeks. See, like David Baker said, Luke Thomas, what's going to happen to him? He's not going to get, a, he's not going to get a bit in the squad, is it? A place in the squad, is he? No, of course he's not. He doesn't he's just be. Sitting there, yeah, because he can't play that left. He's a, he's an out and out left back in a back four, maybe the wing back system, maybe. Just but think, he's... we've got Thomas coming back in. Guess there's another player in left back who we've not even like even spoke about. Yes, he's out on loan, but Christiansen. But uh, there's another it's one like, can only play. Do you know what I mean? Back. We've got these players that are, they're in the club still, but they are basically dead wood now because they're not going to fit into any sort of team. So yeah. there's of course, there's quite a few players that no one's going to buy. I don't. I think he's at Bologna at the moment, but he obviously isn't doing well, well enough to to prove that he deserves to be bought. So it's it's a hard one because the, the amount of players we've got in our squad that aren't good enough, for instance, Ward. It's just it's it's just not going to happen. Yeah, like Richard Houston just said, Thomas to Sunderland. That's what the that's what the things were. Um, mm. The ITK people were saying. Um, so when, um, Sensi coming in, Pratt coming in, Pratt back players back from Afcon. But oh yeah, Vardy. Uh, what's that called? Sorry, I've lost the comments. Uh, Vardy back in training. Now we're looking like Baybrook as well. See, he, he hasn't actually seen Baybrook at all, has he? He said that in his thing. He doesn't know anything about Baybrook apart from what people have told him. So I think it's a bit early. It's like Will Alves. Everyone's expecting Will Alves to come straight back in. But mm. we haven't seen hide nor hair of him. He's not even been on the bench at all. Um, and like Nick says about Castagna, at uh, Castagna, Christiansen, sorry, Castagna. Where did that come from? Um, they they don't want to pay the fifteen million. It is. It is. Of of course, it's not. Like I say, we, the moment we bought him, he's played about four or five games from what I remember, and then come and go back into the squad. And now we've got a new manager, and a new system. That like, it just there's no point even being in the club. So we probably made his big big move by coming from Copenhagen to us and now he's basically just lost his career at the moment because there's nobody yeah. wants him. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's my, yeah, yeah. Um, Vardy coming back, do you think, will he be on the bench or do you think he'll just be a, a not a squad player, uh, he'll be in the match day squad, sorry, I mean. I don't think he should uh, start. He won't start, will he? Smart, uh, Vardy won't start, will he? I don't think he will start. Um, it would be great to have him on the bench. Like I say, I was saying on the other show that Vardy or Kel, when they're on the bench, normally perform better when they come on. Obviously, Kel has not been doing it recently, but Vardy has been. Um, and as much as I'd like him to start over Cannon, I think Cannon's doing well and you've got to keep, keep giving him game time because that's this is now what we've been waiting for. We've always been saying, put Cannon in, put Cannon in. And now it is at the AFCON time. This is his perfect yeah. time to shine. So it is what it is. And hopefully he can, he can keep scoring because Ipswich is going to be a tough test for him. I mean, everyone knows my feelings on DP in the middle of the park. Um, he's got to play on Monday nights, hasn't he? He has to play. Has to. There's no other. Has to. I mean, with Castell going back, 
It looks like KBH might be injured. He did say that he only trained on Friday. It was his first day training, so they'll have to see. So there is a chance KDH might play, but he is a huge doubt. Um, I can see, I can see him starting in a, in a game against Ipswich. I can't, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if he's in that main squad. I mean, probably um, he'll start him. I mean, he might play against Birmingham in the cup, and he'll leave him out, leave him out for the Birmingham game, and then play him against Swansea on the Tuesday mm-hmm. night. So. He might uh, even come uh, off early in the in the in the game tomorrow, yeah. but I would, um, I would say that Perth is out there. for the season, so he won't be able to haunt us at all. Andy Meadows, he got injured against us, didn't he? And he's been yeah. injured. Uh, I think Wayne says Cannon can only get better. Yes, Cannon can only get better, can't he? Um, Pratt will be in. <laughs> yeah, Pratt will be injured as soon as he starts playing. I love. I like. I keep saying everyone knows how I feel about DP. I I think it's great. It's. I don't know why he hasn't played more. Yes, I know he's been injured, but I don't know why he hasn't played more when he is available. The last he's, few weeks, he's, been he's on the best. He's the best player, like quality-wise, for the role we're the, for the positions we're playing in. Jules Briel is okay in that role. Yes, he's doing brilliantly for what his stats are, but he's not that out-and-out attacking the field role. Someone like Pratt is better in that style of play. So for me, he has to be in there, and he might not score, but he his passing and his quality on the ball is, is second to none. So I, I don't know how we're not getting him in. Um, it's like here, David James Taylor says we don't hear much about Vardy being essential these days, do we? Which is true. We don't actually don't see Vardy being. He's got to play. He's got to play, which is what it used to be, wasn't it? As soon as he was out injured. Um, we played Vardy straight away, although Vardy never used to be injured that much, did he? No. On that note, I'm going to, uh, I've had two click the links that I've sent out. I'm going to bring Nick in. Morning, Nick. How are you, pal? Morning, guys. You're all right. Well, the Sunday morning, early Sunday morning for you. And a veteran, a veteran of Leicester Fan TV, Jono. Jono, how the devil are you, pal? Morning, guys. It's been Good a while since you've been up on the Sunday um, morning. Veteran. Uh, I'll take that as a compliment, Jamie. Veteran. <laughs> anyway, you two. We've just been talking about Cassidy. We've been talking about uh, Vardy and uh, a yeah. bit of Dennis Pratt. What's your feelings, Jono, on the team on the team for Monday night? And who would you replace? Which would mean really haven't spoken about yet. Fatua because he can't play can he, for the next three games. Yeah, um, we're a bit we're a bit light, aren't we? Just for a, a few weeks, I think. Into the Fatua question is probably going to be someone like um, um, Maxi. I don't know actually. I don't know. I I was thinking like Dennis Pratt. I agree with you. Uh, Nakatir probably um, would probably start maybe instead of Fatua, possibly. Um, uh, Dennis Pratt probably is our best option. But I always question about Dennis Pratt about whether his head's in it anymore. I think he's just sort of hanging around, wanting a move and. On paper, he's quality, I think. I'd agree with you on that, Jamie. But I just wonder whether he's really sort of his head's in it. Yeah. Anymore. Nick, what do so... you think about, about Monday night? What's your choice of players in and out and shaking it a bit out a bit? Well, I'm not too bothered about Cassidy going. Um, no, don't get on I, was, I wasn't <laughs> impressed. And I think he's been invisible. No. He was invisible for quite a lot of the games. Uh, in regards to Monday... It all depends on if Casey McAteer is going to be fit or not. If he is, I'd start him. If not, failing that, bring in Albrighton. Mm. Yeah, that's a good call. Yeah, Albrighton. Uh, Adam Tucker agrees with. Oh, yeah. sorry, wrong. Adam Tucker agrees with you. Albrighton to start. Uh, ben Morgan well, gives you that in with a, not really gives you that attacking outlet and defensive outlet though, which is probably yeah. when we're coming against second place, we're probably going to need it, aren't we? So. Do you know that's what? And now, and now we've got, and now we've got Cannon up front. Obviously, he's a bit more of a big man up front. You, the crosses in could be really, exactly. really, really, really key to getting some goals in. I still maintain well, he's the best. Ironically, that's what the ball we have. They were trying to provide him. Sorry, yeah, as interrupted. I, know, would, I mean, would I was going to say, ironically, that's what Cassidy was doing, wasn't it? Yeah. If he was a KDH is out, he's doubtful. Yeah. Do you think Hamza will drop into his role, Jono? Hamza, what with KDH out? That's the 
big worry for me on uh, Monday night, to be honest. We're a bit light in the centre of the park, aren't we? I mean, yeah, probably Hamza and Dennis Pratt are the two options for me that would cover those two at number eight. Um, maybe Ricardo slop, slotting into midfield. We've seen him do that a couple of times. Um, there will probably be the options that he might look at. I was going to yeah, mention. I, I was going. I was going to uh, mention that Ricardo is the has been the one to always go into that right hand side spot and put someone like Chaudhry in his old spot. So you never know. You could see that as well. Yeah. Um, we got the ball back as well, so we could lost the on the other side. Uh, at gun, David Baker says the uh, the Turkish lad at gun. Could he play that role, Reedy? Do you think? What in the, uh, the central role? Adh. Yes, he, I I prefer him in that role. I think he's too lightweight on the wing, um, and in the middle, obviously, he's, he's very small, so he can be a bit more agile, 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 I guess. So for me, he can play that role, but it all depends who else plays with him. Because for me, you have to have a big man and a small man in that like attacking role. Like I say, Cassidy was one of the big men, and then Jusbiel was not the small man, but you know what I mean. It was. Uh, a bit more of a lightweight. Yeah, this world does a lot of the old fashioned box to box running, doesn't he, John? He's a big, he's the midfielder that does all that hard running. Um, but Nick, um, I don't know whether you've seen any of the social media yeah. posts after the commentary game, so the M69 derby. He, he gave the players a couple of days rest, didn't he? Um, hopefully for a bit of a reset. Mavid DB was in Paris at Disneyland with Mickey Mouse, Ricky P was in Porto, Mads was um, in, back in Denmark. Doyle and Nelson went out with the fam without went out with the wives and girlfriends for something to eat. Even stalking them all. <laughs> no, it's what you see on social media. Pat. If you know your stuff and you're doing a show, you do your research. You don't just turn up. There we are. You don't just turn up, press a button like you do. You do uh, your research. Do you think this reset is needed, Nick? Because the last few times, um, we lost to Hull, then we put four past Southampton. We lost to Liverpool, we put four past Blackburn, we lost to Leeds and Borough. We beat Watford. We drew to Chef Wednesday, beat West Brom. We drew with Ipswich and beat Cardiff. So every time we've dropped points, we've come back and with a win. And can you see that happening with with Enzo letting the players have a few days off to recuperate and a bit of R and R, as they say? I don't think it can do the, the squad any harm. I mean, when you think how many games we played in, you know, over the Christmas period in such a short space of time. Um, I mean, a lot of clubs do it these days. I think Arsenal, for example, who played last night, or yesterday, lunchtime rather, they went to Dubai, didn't they, for the week and just to, you know, refresh and stuff. It's what teams seem to do these days. So we'll see where we, we go. Let's be fair. The last time we had a little setback, like you say, we went on a run again, you know. Yeah. And when we lost to Hull, we had that international break, didn't we? And then we came back and we... We kicked on again. So, what's yeah. to say that we don't even, do it even, tonight? Even Enzo said that uh, he's been spending time with his four kids. I think after if, if you've got four kids, you want to get back to work as soon as possible. Uh, well, so he's yeah. probably, he was probably enjoying it. It probably wasn't, but he's probably had a bit of a reset. He's had time with his family, and he's had a couple of days off himself. So, John, what do you think that reset? Do you think it's a decent time to have a reset after a, a, the M sixty nine derby? I do, yeah. I do think so. A um, few days off. Um, a few days off the training isn't going to make any difference, I think. And as you've rightly put, when we've had a setback, we've come back, generally speaking, and, and put in a good performance and then gone on another run. And I think that's what we need to do again. I think that they're going to be focused on the Ipswich game because they're, they're, they're our nearest challenges up until yesterday when Southampton went second. But uh, if we put in a statement performance tomorrow, you kind of you know, puts in a really, you know, puts us in a great position and also, you know, sort of stamps us, stamps our mark back on the league again. Um, so I think, yeah, they'll be fully focused on it tomorrow. I think the only doubt we have, I think, is the the lack of people in the centre of the park that are going to be out injured or at AFCON or whatever. And I think that's the only small niggle, isn't it? If we had our yeah. full strength team out, I think I'd be really confident that we'd, we'd do the business tomorrow. Um, so I still think we will. I still think we'll win it. Um, so I'm confident. Yeah. You're confident, I think yeah. The, to answer your question, I think, yeah, the break will have done them good. Yeah. yeah. Really, uh, Adam's asked a question or a statement. I'm not sure whether it's a question or a statement, actually. It's not a must-win game, but builds a good buffer if we get that win. 
Um, yes. Is it a must-win game? Is it? Is that a question? Or I, is that a statement he's saying? He's asking. If I'm, to, if I'm totally honest, I think it is a must-win game because Southampton. Now we were talking before that Southampton are really on a on a, a run to get back get back up and. If we start dropping points here or there, if it is to Ipswich or is to another team this season, there'll only be a few points away from us and we can't let that happen. So we want to get that 10-point 10, 10, uh, buffer again tomorrow night and obviously let, let Ipswich know that they aren't they aren't the ones to gulp as well. It's going to be Southampton. Right. See, I honestly don't think, uh, like the Facebook, whoever the Facebook user is, great comment, great comment. I don't think a draw, Nick, is the end of the world if we only get a draw against Ipswich. Yes, it's great to win your home games and make it six on the bounce wins. But, and I, yeah, I sort of agree with whoever the Facebook user is that a draw wouldn't be a bad result, yeah. Nick, against them. I don't think so. I think a lot of I think a lot of it for tomorrow night all depends on what mentality they're going to come out with tomorrow. I mean, let's be fair. If all of us were on the pitch right now, we'd still probably be hurting from Cov. And we'd want to go out there and make a statement and stuff. So, it, and I can see probably quite a few players that are in the squad have that sort of mentality. But if we go out to um, Ipswich, um, Norwich game proved it where Norwich went to them um, and Ipswich crumbled. If we go in with that mentality, I can't see anything other than a win. So, they don't like it when you get in the faces, they just crumble. And they ain't in the best of be right. though. Exactly. No, no. You know, um, every game, like Andy Menhurst, John Owens says, and every game is a must-win game. March 16th could be a title decider, John Owens, which is against Southampton. It could be. That's the game that could be depend decides where the title goes. I mean, Possibly, to be fair, yeah. I mean, we've got a good buffer, haven't we? We've got a good buffer to them uh, already. So I think tomorrow um, is a do not lose game rather than a, a must-win. So I think a draw is okay. If we lose to Ipswich, it's a six-pointer, isn't it? They gain another three points back on us and we don't get them. So I think if we get a draw, I think it's okay. We've still got the buffer to Southampton, which would be about eight points, I think, is it? Yeah. If yeah. we draw. Yeah. So title decided the 16th, maybe. It's definitely, I think, it's looking that way, isn't it? Southampton Wait, could, and I mean, Southampton, the top Jono, Southampton, 20, is it 20 or 21 games? Unbeaten. 21 games. It's a hell of a run, that's that, mental, isn't, it? isn't it? What's their club it's record? Isn't it? They broke the record yesterday. I think. Doing it. I think we were the last team to beat them. Yeah, I think. I mean, would be for me, lot. I ain't bothered about the title. If I'm, I'll hold my hands up, no, I'm really not bothered about going up as champions. As long as we go up, I ain't bothered. If no. Southampton you know I mean? it, fair play to him because don't that, get me wrong. wrong. Silverware is nice and all that lot, and Locke's getting excited about. Breaking the points record, this, that, and the other. That's fine. You know, everybody's got something they want. That's fine. But I ain't bothered. I just want us to go up and be back where no, in my opinion, no, we should be playing week in, week out. Going up as winners, in my mind, there's a bit of kudos about going up as winners. And people... well, that's worked out well for Burnley, isn't it, this season, Jamie? Yeah, and no, all the other teams yeah, that have gone up as champions and stuff. To Burnley. You can't compare us to Burnley because Burnley a lot, of, are... a lot of pundits do because of the style Burnley we're playing and like... how we're smashing it. A lot of a lot of pundits are comparing us to Burnley. Burnley are like Northerners with flat caps and whippets. That's all they are up there. We're a totally different different line of people that way. You can't compare us to Burnley. I don't care what the pundits What's say. What's the region got to do with comparison? <laughs> you just said the punters. Oh, no, you just said the punters are. No, in the style of, and the style of well, so where we're playing and the points and all that lot and how we're smashing the league. All is different. The kudos <laughs> of going up with that championship badge against the the trophy up there is better than finishing second. Oh no, completely. I I agree with that. What I'm saying is. If South, if if a team like Southampton in the form that they're doing it, if they don't win another game, if they don't lose another game this season and they win it, you can't you can't fault them because we are no. we are losing games here or there. That's what I'm trying to say. It's like you know they're effectively chasing us down and stuff like that. So yeah. you know, Macca, I think you went a bit too much there, pal. And going the and says going up as champions is a must. It's not. Yeah. I'm with you, Jamie, on this. It's a bit of silverware, it wouldn't go amiss. And I think we're in a position where we should be challenging and getting the silverware. We're probably the strongest team. I mean, Jono, it's boring. We haven't done anything for two years, have we? We haven't won anything, sorry, for three years. So it's a bit getting a bit boring now, isn't it? Exactly. 
Exactly. Um, exactly. Well, and the kudos thing is, is important, I think. And we're not like Burnley because we won the Premier League. We were a different yeah. size club. And like Maxine says, it's about the winning mentality. Burnley got 14 draws last season, which is hugely different to what we've done. We've only had two draws this year. Um, so I, we're diff, totally, no matter what the pundits Nick say, we're totally different to what Burnley All I'm said. saying is, all I'm trying to say is, look, we have got a winning mentality in this squad. Look at the league table. But all I'm trying to say is, if, like Reedy says, they chase us down, and fair play to them if they do, and they deserve it, it's not the end of the world. People will blow their bloody tops off if we don't go as champions. But what would you rather be doing? Would you rather be going up back into the Premier League, you know, or staying in the championships for another two or three seasons? Because let's be fair, you've got Leeds chasing us as well. If we ended up in the playoffs, for example, that's a lottery. Anything mm -hmm. can happen in the playoffs. Yeah, I, t I totally agree with you that way. About I that's, would, that's yes. the way I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying I would like to say. To go up. I want to go up, but I want to go up as champions. I don't want to go up yeah. as second place. But that's what I'm trying to say. So, but you know. We're in such a position now, like David just says, like I was. Although, really, I'm not sure you were even born in 2003, were you? I was, yeah. Uh, when we we lost to Portsmouth, we went up. Yeah, it's great. Um, but we went up in second place. But it yeah, was, but to it, be fair to, to that time, Portsmouth bought the bloody league and stuff. They bought, they had Sheringham and stuff where we had Brian Dean and Dickoff up top. You know, we our, our squad was near enough pension in this age at that time. No, they Dean effectively like did. They effectively, they, no, he then. didn't. No, he didn't. He started up front with Dickoff that season. It was Dickoff and Dean. Was it? Yes, yeah, it was. Right. Was it? Oh, right. Okay, man. Sorry. But yeah, I'm come saying. on, Jamie. Get your facts right. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I, thought, I, thought, I thought Dean had gone by then. No, he was, yeah. he, it was him and Dick off up top. We actually had players like Muzzy Is it playing for us? Yes, stuff. because we started this. Yes, we did. Sorry, yes, because Brian Dean scored the first two goals at Phil's, against uh, Brighton Walkers in the league. First official goal. Uh, yeah. Didn't we yeah. have Ferdinand at that time as well? Maybe no, that was the season. That's when we went up. That was the that season, was the season after. before, wasn't it? Yeah, and we bought Gillespie and all the yeah, other yeah. Sprite that came with it because we couldn't buy anybody because we were skin. Yeah. Uh, some of it was <laughs> Um But yeah, we've got, we're going, sort of going off subject a little bit now, lads. Uh, the next three games, Ipswich, Birmingham and Swansea, three home games on the trot. Would you be happy with two league wins and getting knocked out by Birmingham or would you want three home wins? Three home wins. Not, we should be we should be beating Birmingham and as much as you were saying that about winning the FA Cup, it's not an impossibility. I didn't. Macca said that. I didn't. No, I know. I no, I know. I but you were saying he, the FA Cup again. You were saying was he was dreaming, but all I'm saying is, there's every chance a Championship side could be it can win the FA Cup. Like I say, Middlesbrough are one nil up going into a second leg against Chelsea, unless it's I'm not sure if it's been played yet, but no, it's true they could tonight. be they could be in they could be in the final. It it can happen. So, it's and not if an we idol get for a championship we, team to get to the final no, anyway, look at Millwall. They did it a few years ago. If we can get a good run, beating Birmingham, and then you go and get another League One or Championship side going into going into the later stages of this competition, you never know. So for me, you you you, you don't want to risk losing the FA Cup game for two wins. You might you go full full pelt full free. It'd be an interesting stat to look up, wouldn't it? The first team to do the double that have come from the Championship and the FA Cup winners. I don't know who that would be, whether it's, it's ever been, been done. done. I don't, I don't think, think it's, it's I don't think a, sec a second division club. Oh, Southampton. Didn't South oh, no, they were in the second division, though, weren't they? Did they? Yeah, that's the equivalent to the Championship. Yeah, yeah second tier winners. winners and... I can't remember. Second tier winners of, and then FA Cup. Yeah, it's worth a look um, up, isn't it? West Brom did. Oh, West Brom did. West Brom did it according to form. Not that I know. I will we'll be googling that soon. Um, I must say, Aggie's made a banging point here. Birmingham sold their section yeah. out of five, and I think it was five thousand four hundred and something or other. They sold out. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure we're going to sell. I'm not sure it's going to be a full sellout though. I don't think all these people have got moaning about moaning and groaning. About, oh, I can't get tickets to take the kids down. I can't because it's not going on general sale. Now, here's your bloody chance. If you live there and you want to take your kids down, take them down. There's loads of tickets available. Really, are you going? I wasn't, but I am. 
You wasn't, but you are. Oh, just, so that means Jake and Sam and Phil are going as well, then, Ella? Uh, no, they're not. They're not? Ooh. Ooh. No. No, Ooh. I'm all right. My part-time well, fans. there's some dirt for Phil's show tomorrow. He's not going. <laughs> he won't do it tomorrow, <laughs> isn't he? He no, he's not going. Oh, yeah, he is going to that one. I'm sorry. I keep thinking yes. he's not going to games. No. Um, but, yeah, so there's everyone moaning about not being able to get tickets. Now's your chance to get tickets to go and see him. The certain, I mean, like, Jono and Nick, we live and me, we live further enough away, but Reed is pretty damn close. He's going. Jono, you go as many times as you can, don't you? I think you've been about three times this year, haven't you, so far? Yeah, three games I've been to, yeah. Um, yeah so I'd like to go to more, to be honest. Uh, Plan is to get to a couple I'll more. I'll be back there yeah, sooner or later. I think either the QPR or the Southampton game, I'll be back for one of the two. So I'll still be there. I fly back in and get me tickets. But yeah, I would have been there if I was there. I think the last time we played Birmingham in the cup. Even Elijah and Canada made the effort one. to get down this season. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now is your chance. Everyone's moaning about tickets going on general sale. Yeah, people are doing trying to speak to the club and do that. There's tickets available. Go. No. Go and get your tickets. Here's your chance to go and get some tickets. Go and get them. That's all I say. Anyway, enough of that. Nick, before we go, score prediction for tomorrow night. And everyone comments in. Score prediction for tomorrow night. 2 0, Leicester. Clean sheet. He's going for a clean sheet. Don't get me wrong, it'll be nervy clean sheet, but I think we'll keep a clean sheet. I'm not sure. Oh, David, you're a 2 1. Yeah, see. And, yeah. Draw, yeah, I don't understand where it's coming from. Um, it's the away priority. Yes, yeah, we're not. Yeah, no, Chris. Yeah, that is. I'd love to go to an away game, but I can never, I can never get on. I can never get a ticket because there's so many people that pass spares about to so many people. I know people that went to the commentary game. They haven't even got a season ticket. I don't know, even know how they get tickets for it. But that's another show all on its own. That is right. That's enough about tickets. Uh, Phil Connors has gone for three one. Um, Neil's going for 2-1. Uh, Mark Harrison's going for 3-2. Bo Records is going for 3-1. Uh, Craig Pearson, 9-0. I don't think so. Somehow, Craig. Um, only on FIFA, Craig. Only on FIFA, yeah. I don't think he's got time to play FIFA. <laughs> um, let's have a look. Oh, Derek's going 2-0 Ipswich. Oh, Derek. That's a bit naughty of you. Wayne's going for 2-0. Scott's going for 3-2. I reckon it could be a 3-2, Jono. And what, what would you be going for, Jono? I think it'd be tight, actually. I'll take I'll take a 1-0. But I think, yeah, I think maybe we'll go back to... I couldn't bear a 1-0, Jono. Sorry. In the last few minutes, a 1-0. That's squeaky yeah. bum time and a half, isn't it? That is. Uh, Tom's being positive 5-0. Um Ipswich are lucky. 2-1 Leicester. Anthony's gone for 2-1 Leicester. Nick, before you go, what did you say? 2-0, mate, didn't you? I said 2-0. But I think I don't think it I think we'll, you know, come the second half, it'll be one of those games where we're a bit, bit backs to the wall and stuff. So, but we'll see. All right, Nick. We shall speak to you next week and let's see if you get your score prediction right for next week. See you later, pal. All right. Well, there you go, guys. See you in a bit. Uh, Callum's gone for it must be a boring nil-nil there from Callum. Um, I wouldn't want it nil nil. Well, yeah, you can still get a point from it, wouldn't you? Uh, Chris has gone for 2 1. Uh, that's what you said, 1 0, didn't you, Jono? Craig Pearson's going for Desmond. Not, I uh, don't fancy a Desmond at home, but we shall see. Uh, right then, Jono, we'll let you get back to your daddy daycare because I think you're looking after the kids at the same time, ain't you, pal? Yeah, it's football practice now. Off to football <laughs> practice. <laughs> what, are you kicking the ball to them while you're under, uh, under the table here? <laughs> no. Uh... So Sunday morning, I'm trying to yeah get them into playing, get them running around a little bit. Good so And then who's out of breath first, you or them? <laughs> yeah, I, I do <laughs> sit on the sidelines. Fair, fair play. <laughs> All right, and John, I hope we shall share you later. Enjoy your one nil victory tomorrow night, pal. Yeah, nice to speak to everyone. See you later. Yeah, later pal. Thanks for joining. Uh, Bradley's going for a two nil uh, surprise, Scott. They're surprised everyone doesn't think we will concede two after the last few games after we have done. Yeah, I can see it's conceding, Scott. Reedy, what are you giggling at? Just the fact that I think we will concede. That's a problem. Um, yeah. oh, I, I don't know because I've said 2-1 on Lox's show, but there's, I've always thought, when I've, when I've heard of Ipswich, I've always come from behind. And if we score early on, I wouldn't be too shocked 
not in a negative way, I wouldn't be too shocked if they do come back and somehow win it. So we've got to just make sure we're tight at the back and if we do score early, we need to score a few instead of conceding and then that's game over. So for me, we, I'm going to go 2-1. 2-1, yeah, I see. That's another score line that tight. Wouldn't, do, wouldn't do me any good sitting there the last few minutes on a 2-1 victory and then you just play because... All I've got in mind. I know it's only happened six times, and we've only conceded eighteen league. No, no, twenty league goals now. I think we've conceded. Yeah, um, it's only happened six or seven times, but it's still a lot. Out of twenty goals to concede in the last few minutes, quite a few times, it still gives you that little bit of squeaky bum time, and there's nothing you can do about it at all. But I, I don't know. I'd love to get an early goal, and then I'd love to get like a goal in the seventieth minute to make it two 0 and we can try and sit on that 2-0, but I can still see his con- conceding and give us a load of grief. A bit, so like the Millwall game. Man. a bit like the Millwall game. No, I'm going for 2-0, but I can see it conceding, uh, though, and making okay. it hard for us. I'd love a 2-0, but, yeah, two, yeah, we've just got to learn how to kill games off. That's what we've got to do, isn't it? Anyway, Reedy, much appreciated. We shall see you next week. Joseph has gone for uh, 3-1. Yeah, I'll hopefully it'll be a 3-1 win. Uh, Kiefer has gone for 4 0. So we shall see. It'd be lovely if it was 4 0. Nice and easy 4 0 victory. All right, then, Reedy, we shall speak to you later, pal. Be good. See you, see you later, mate. Thanks for joining. Cheers, all. Much appreciated. Thanks for joining once again on a Sunday morning. All you have to do is click the link that gets sent to you, ask for the link, and we send it to you, and you can join. It's as easy as that. Or let me know through the week if you want to join. It's really nice speaking to you. It's ciao, ciao. Adios, goodbye, a river dirty, and that's the final whistle. Thanks for watching Leicester Fan TV. Thanks to our sponsors, Everards, Bolo Blinds, Pocket Pies, Pink Car Leasing, Distillers Direct, Hologram, Take Me, Nubian Cow, The Fox's Arms, and Rainbows. Run by the fans, for the fans. Follow us on socials at Leicester Fan TV and visit LeicesterFanTV.com.